Hey everyone, Sir Jellybean here with The Great War, new World War 1 game coming out in March I believe. And I've just played through the tutorial, demo, done a few battles, and this is just after the demo you get to play for a few turns, depending on how many battles you win or lose. And it's a World War 1 game obviously, kind of a mix of, you have the strategic map for movement of infantry, buying up supplies, research tree, you know, building fortifications, which do the map, or building structures, and attacking and defending. Then you're also going to real-time battles, which are really brutal. You're talking thousands of dead, which I will show in just a few minutes. <laughs> and you've also, very interesting, like game, they're kind of more of a historical um, approach kind of thing. So, for instance, like Verdun gives a bonus of 30% max morale for all battles because it's pride of that nation. You have your entry points, so all the French come in from Paris, all the Brits coming from Calais, and all the Americans coming from Les, whatever that says. <laughs> you've also got different types of troops, so you've got your British, you've got your French, you've got your German, your Belgians, then you obviously have the central powers, a bit different. If you mix troops, for instance, they'll get a morale negative on the Allied side, because of the language barrier. You've got siege artillery, you've got new orders. planes, and you've got various different types of things. It's actually pretty good, you've even got, um, you've got like, espionage, so you could, for instance, I'll show you here, you want to do army intel, it will show you all the enemy's forces, and the adjacent sectors, so for instance, they have infantry corps, artillery, and air wing. They've got tons of infantry, they've got tons of infantry. No armor there, for instance, which is nice to know. And it'll tell you if it's a success. You also get actual events turn on the turn. So sometimes things will pop up and say, like, certain things happen. You've also got your national will gets to zero, you lose. Or if you lose your capital. So for the Germans, it's Krasnuk. And for the Allies, it is Paris. Or Paris for you up across the pond. Um, yeah, it's actually quite impressive so far. The graphics are nice. I enjoy the gameplay. Um, AI is not great, which I'll show you in the battle, but it is a demo and it's not been released yet. And there should be a lot of changes, I imagine, due to the feedback. So, um, yeah, I'll see you in a moment in one of the battles and I'll show you what the meat of the game is about. And here we are in combat. We are on the defensive. So the central powers have taken the option to attack. So when you spawn in, you also have your trench, some pre trenches laid out. Objective, these are your control points, which if the enemy takes is like a minor win. And your command trenches, obviously, if the enemy takes them, it's a great victory for them. You lose a star, I believe. It is a little bit confusing. I'm going to imagine they're going to change a few things about the game. Like I say, the demo, the feedback said what's good and what's bad. So you get to place all your trenches. I'm deleting all these because I like to place my own trenches because this is a bit autistic. <laughs> but they're like um, everyone who, you know, like people who play these kind of games, you like to do your own defense. Now, the AI has not been too good on attack. It's won a couple of battles against me, and I've won mainly against it, but casualties would be in the thousands normally on the, when you're attacking, and sometimes even on defense. So, how, how do you set your trench out? Well, for me, obviously, you get as close as you can to the no man's land. Now, those forests do provide a bit of position for hiding, but it's not the best place. Also, making these kind of weird cuts where they can't effectively get in is great. So that's going to be hard for them to approach. And then we have the command trench down here, which I always just do like a weird, like a bit of a defensive one. And then you also always want a bit of a fallback line. Now, I like to put a couple of comms trenches for quick movement. So I like to have raider troops in the back. So we haven't got that much supply because we're on defence, but having a couple of raider troops ready to a push. But I don't like to connect to the command trench because if I lose those positions, the command trench can fall back. Now, to deploy troops, you have to deploy in the trench before battle, but it's cheaper. So, for instance, these are troops that are three, three supply, because the French, they get, like you'll see, their advantage is home advantage. Infantry companies cost less, so I'd we'll delete the trench there. <laughs> but yeah, it's very cheap to deploy in pre battle, and then the, sh the price doubles. So, you want to use your full population cap if you can, you can afford to. And you get the supply from your companies pre battle, but if you've got a supply depot, which I have, you get access to the global supply pool in the battle, so for instance for artillery and things like that. Now, I think we do have some artillery. I'm just going to deploy, I'm going to stack up enough to defend the front lines. You do need enough. Um, artillery wise, I'm going to have just some light artillery. Because um, we won't have that much support weapon right now. MGs are amazing, so obviously having a couple of MGs ready to cut down whatever comes is always fantastic. I like to have, and I think on this one, position is going to be better. 
here. I'm also going to place one there. So that kind of gives a bit of firing arc. And on this side, just one kind of there. Um, actually, it might be better there. So it will cut them off if they try and go that way. But the direct push will be open. And oh, we could do with some balloons to see where they come. So the balloon's going to go there. So we've got no supply left. <laughs> we've got a little bit, so we might as well stack a few more troops in the rear. We can get another couple of squads in. So that's all the supply used up, but we'll get some when the battle starts. And I'm going to click Engage Battle. So I can explain a few things for you now. Also, you get these little quotes. One does not wage war to get rid of war, which kind of makes sense, but doesn't, because if your enemy's preparing for war, what are you supposed to do? Just sit there and get shot in the face. And he's a French politician. No surprise. <laughs> So when you start the battle straight away, you raise your balloons, and you'll see the line of sight will increase ridiculously. And bang. Oh, so the Germans have got a lot of infantry, as you'd expect. They've got some MGs set up, even though they're on the attack. They've got artillery, that's heavy. So we can probably see where the push will come from. I imagine straight into A, but you're not too sure yet. And then you'll have access, if you've got planes, you can call them in. If you have siege artillery, you can, as you can see, I've got a bit more supply. That's come in, but not lots. I will be bringing some raider troops in. So if we get a line to push, these guys can fight back and go down the comms trenches to retake our positions, which is important. And we do have a bit of artillery. Nothing crazy. I know our supply is severely depleted, Mr. Frenchy man. So, oh, so we've got, we've got movement. Oh, enemy planes are coming in. Oh, lower the balloon, lower the balloon, lower the balloon, lower the balloon. I think that stops them from attacking it. But we haven't got any aircraft to support back. Because you have to move them in the strategic map. I do like how... Kind of like in Gates of Hell when you put what you bring in. If you don't bring any aircraft or tanks, you can't decide to bring some. That's it. You've got what your infantry companies have, for instance, or whatever company is available. So, you have to think, kind of think like that. Now, the enemy's probably going to push up this way. Um, I will bring some troops to the command, for the, uh, command trench. Uh, I think one of the companies didn't actually get selected very well. So we'll just put them there. When they come in, as you'll see different stances, they're in March. But you want them in skirmish when they're moving, because it makes them less vulnerable. March marches quicker. So now you can speed up to times two. It sometimes takes a bit. So we've got that could be a bomber, could be an aircraft. They've got air superiority, because we've got no air power, which makes us very vulnerable. I'm going to raise the balloon quickly just to see, because. Knowing where the enemy is coming from means I can switch some of the reinforcements to that. So they're going to be pushing down this way, I imagine. Yep, so here comes the attack. Now we've got MG set up actually in the pretty good positions here. Oh, they're pushing that way heavy. So just going to pause a sec. So like, for instance, I know now there's probably about 20 infantry companies going to storm into here. So I will put, so for instance, my raider troops here in this unit. Put them on march and bring them down here. Bring them bring them down here ready to get in these trenches and ready to push back into the enemy. So that's a lot of troops coming in, but it's not end of the world. We've also got artillery, so we will be putting some suppression barrage down. So they're getting slaughtered actually, but I'm going to put some suppression there. And as you see, as they come through, it's not as good as heavy artillery, but it will suppress a bit, as you can see. Put them down, make some stop, more time for the MGs to fire. Riflemen do a lot of damage, now they're hitting us, so the balloon's got to come down because they're going on a balloon busting mission. Those infantry could take that balloon out if they get close. Hopefully the MG will kill. That's good. So we're getting very close now, as you see. Swarming. AI is doing alright on this one, just a mass push. We'll um, just pause a sec so I can get my troops into here. You can go pause or half speed, which is interesting. We'll do a bit of half speed just to show you. That's nice and slow. And just look at that absolute carnage. We do have these raider troops we need to um, push back if we lose some men, which we probably will. They'll be able to hold that trench. There's the enemy bomber there. Are oh, they coming in for the emplacements? Yeah, the MG's gone. We also lost the balloon. We're getting hit with a barrage there. The MG there can... They are doing a bit of a push there, but we've held it off. So that's a massive infantry push there. The command trench could be under threat here. They're taking position there. Now we still have troops here. We're going to hold the line as much as we can. These raider troops are ready to counter push. So, they definitely took position A at this point, or they've done a lot of damage. But it's not over yet. We've got counter troops ready to come in. So, we're going to bring them in. Four squads. 
and we've got these raiders and stuff as well. Now it's not they've been quite successful breaking a line, but they haven't got the troops to hold it yet. So straight away push those troops forward and what we'll do. So we'll push these forward. I think he's on bombing mission for emplacements, I hope. So he shouldn't be doing harassment fire. Because harassment's really good against troops, they'll kill a lot of it. If you're out in the open, they will just slaughter you. As you can see now, they're on march, so they're really quick. We'll just get these back up to the trench. So when you do push a trench, see they, are, they actually do quite well. Problem is, they don't do combined arms too well. And what they should have done is had something supporting, or more artillery. And it, So even though they took the position, they weren't able to exploit it. Like, for instance, they should have got those troops in the line, and gradually moved down. But the AI is not terrible, it's just a bit short, but the gameplay looks phenomenal, like the game's beautiful, and you get persistent damage, so these trenches were here. So they've requested a ceasefire now, and you can deny, and you can try and push back, or you can choose. So I'll choose to accept, and then you'll get the back results. So just accept, get yeah, a little loading screen. So we've achieved some success, but daylight's gone. We will probably get the victory on this because they took massive casualties and you'll see the damage. We took some casualties as well though. We weren't you know, the AI does do some effective stuff. And just gonna load up now. As you can see here, we lost a thirteen hundred. They lost forty two hundred on the attack, which you know they were attacking. We get a victory because they didn't take any points. They lost a lot, so that's a victory for us. And I'll just jump to the world map and you can see the aftermath of the battle. And it uses gold to replenish, and they let you use some national wealth. And did you know, machine gun and mortar emplacements can be manually targeted by selecting them and right-clicking a target. So you can take over them and go for priorities. So for instance, if they send flame troops or raider infantry. So they lost 11 national will, and replenishment cost 576 gold. So it cost us a bit to replenish. And we got research grant, so we got some new rewards. And also... Next turns just happened, so they attacked and the turns finished. They could have done multiple. So spies everywhere, we lose some national will. And you get these cool things like I'll show you a national event. So Tsar of Russia's murdered. I won't read through all that. But that's an interesting thing. So you learn a bit of history. See, people game say, say games aren't educational. They are. And most resource in the form of money. So if I buy four hundred supply, I get a thousand gold. So for instance, just go, right, have some supply. And should I trigger? Do another one. There, we get a thousand gold. So thank you very much for that. Like it's two hundred supply actually. And then you can also see things change on the battlefield. So you've got rain here. So for instance, muddy rainy season, battlefield turns to mud, movement speed and artillery damage are reduced, all air missions are grounded. So that makes it more difficult to attack and better to defend. And then we spy in region Ypres. So if we find that region, can't that was that. So up here, the enemy is using spies. You can do things like um, counterintelligence. So they will start to help the enemy stop attacking you know, using the spies against you. And I'll just quickly show you the research tree. So it's massive. You won't be able to unlock everything in the campaign, I think it said. So for instance, I'm just going to unlock smoke shells or gas shells because they're fun. So that was a defense and a little bit of the gameplay. And I will also be showing an attack in a second, which I'll cut to. And then I'll do my full breakdown of the review. I hope you join it so far and here we are on the attack just to lay the few trenches so we are playing with Brits now and we're attacking a central powers position so like I say because it's demo campaign and there's nothing preset you've got to set your trenches like this every match but normally once you've set some trenches down they should persist to the next battle they're not in the worst placement actually I'm gonna get rid of some of these because they're not really that useful to me I'd rather place my own trenches personally I can get more more use out of them. I, I think there needs to be a button just to obviously ask if you want to delete your trenches, but it'd be good at the start of the battle to say, right, wipe everything off and I'll place. Like I say, I will show you a full placement so you can actually get a bit of a grasp of what the game has to offer. So No Man's Land you can't place, but I like to have the trenches as close as possible to it. Um, just do that and then we'll take advantage of these big hills. Now, you can go a bit closer sometimes, so for instance this map's more skewed towards the right, so X will be easier to attack. And we'll um, actually, if we just take advantage of that lip on the hill, that's really good. And we'll have a, we'll have the uh, trenches actually a bit to the side there, and we just get some trench down here just in case. And then the command trench is kind of get defended whilst also protecting A. 
bit of a reserve trench. I also like to have a couple of trenches behind with command uh, comms trench for quick movement. I think you can link them up as well. It does take a few points, but that means we can quickly spill from the back to the front for a push. And you can quite easily, you know. People might say it's wasted points, but I do like to have a bit of trench stuff. So also on the attack, you need more artillery. We've got siege artillery, so we can do that. We're going to need some balloons. We're going to go for... So let's just check. So Z's right there in the command trench. X is quite close. Yeah. Um, we'll try and go for the command trench. I'm going to try my ballsy and show you a good victory. A couple of balloons is necessary, really, because if you take one, we'll just get knackered. Um, and artillery-wise, I like one heavy, always, and a light. Well, a couple of lights are always good because they're really good for killing the placements. I'm not going to place any MGs or anything because the chance to counter push is limited. I'm playing Brit, so as you see, more expensive than French deploying, but you've got crack shots at the moment. Stack up tons of standard infantry, I've also got tanks, so you'll see some tank gameplay. Um, obviously the troop wise, you do need some ready to, to hold your lines, actually get rid of one there. Um, just in case they do counter push, I don't expect them to, but they might do, you never know. Um, we should be okay there, and Looks get a couple like of infantry there now. In what I do need, I'm going to use some Gurkhas, badass. Take advantage of them, and we're also going to have some tanks, so... I'm going to go for one that's got the cannons, just one. And one that's got the MGs. Now, they're not invulnerable tanks, but they provide especially for stuff out of... Best thing is they crush obstacles and taking placements, but infantry and trenches are still hard for them to hit. And... Seed artillery, we're not going to use. So we'll begin the battle. You get your little screen, and then when it's all is done and said, God is not mocked, neither are the dead. That's the cenotaph. Oh, that's the, obviously, the memorial. Some great artwork as well. And the game does look beautiful. And it's um, it's definitely a solid 6 or 7 out of 10 at the moment. Depending on, they say they're working on modding. So straight away, I lift the blooms, and now we get to see the salt. I'm playing as the Brits, which is nice instead of the French. So, oh, they've got mortars, MGs, wow. The AI has kind of upped its game since I've started recording for this uh, mini-review. <laughs> um, okay, so... Straight away we have, have seed artillery. And we're just going to... What we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take this. We're going to save the seed artillery before we push forward. But the MGs are priority. So we're just going to absolutely have the MGs. We've got a lot of supplies, so we might use it. The artillery was also in there. As you can see, the explosions are devastating. Just absolutely smashing them. Some people will say it's too easy for MGs to destroy, but you can put some stuff in, some up supply in. Um, on position X, just for one sec. Um, they've got a mortar, but not much else. Got trains in the way. Oh, they're charging. What the hell? I've not really seen him do that, so that was like a counter push, a bit of a random one, very ineffective, just absolute madness. These are German infantry and grenadiers, so there's tough stuff, so you can pause, like we said, and we're going to pause now. So what's going to happen is, land ships are going to come forward, and they're going to push up. Infantry squads are also going to push for the trench, and we're going full balls to the wind push along the entire line, like proper heavy advance. So, we have new and then we're going to bring more stuff behind. Move out. We're just going to go new straight orders. for it. Full assault, no messing around. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the siege artillery to break that. We're going to use suppressing barrage on them. And we're going to suppressing barrage on that as well. And we're going to see if we can get into the line. The siege artillery should arrive as we get to the position. Wow, devastated. So our troops should be able to push straight up there. But there's not even a line left. So bring the tanks up, get the tanks up. Get all the infantry in that you can. And the other waves, they'll have to wait behind. Second wave, kind of in the middle of nowhere, but they'll be fine. Hopefully the infantry can get some gravity on the situation. We've got gas as well, so we'll deploy gas, try and get them to retreat. 
There's no trenches left there. We're actually going to push now. We're going to do a quick pause. And we're just going to try and suppress these units as well. Suppress them again so we can get into the lines. And that should work. So the infantry are pushing in now. The tank's taking damage, so we're pushing back. We'll get another infantry squad up. Send another one up there. These infantry are going to completely push. These tanks are going to push forward. So we're into the lines then straight away, which is fantastic. Gurk arrived as an infantry are going to push. Try and get into those lines. The tanks make an absolute mess of those infantry. The gas is there. That could hurt our own troops there. A bit risky. We need to get in position. So we've taken some losses there. Our troops are fighting in the trenches. Just pause again. We have to need, we need some reinforcements now. So we're going to bring up about six more squads. Let's make it eight. More eight more squads. Oh, we can bring more. Um, make it ten. Just absolutely swarm. And we're also going to bring some air support. Um, bring a harassment mission. So any infantry out of the trenches. Now these troops are fighting quite well. I, what I need to do is win this little combat here, as you can see, and I'll push down the line. So they're going to push down the line so they can push into this trench. We're going to bring another suppressing barrage. Another suppression barrage. Keep busy. This tank's going to switch there. Did that tank survive? It's still alive. He's going to retreat because he's not in the way. So these troops have done a good job. Move them forward. And all our reinforcements are coming now. And the artillery is doing its job. So quite a bit of stuff is there for push the tank so you can see and keep them busy. The harassment fires are going to do a good job. Killing all those infantry, fantastic. It is getting a bit brutal in there. We are going to support, see if they can get involved. One sec. If you send two squads, sometimes you jump out the trench, which isn't good. Send the raider troops in. So these troops are now up here. Whoa, they're getting hit by artillery though. Everyone up, get into march formation. And we're just going to chuck all these troops up into position. And we've just got to avoid that artillery, haven't we? It's a bit hard sometimes to get them in the, the click. But we're going to push these up as well. A few guys get in there. Fantastic. And push these right up. And we have taken the position pretty well. If we push forward down the line, we should have some siege artillery ready. What we'll do is we'll fire some more artillery on here. Tank's still doing a good job, he's going to push with, and these infantry are going to start pushing up. Pushing up the line, further and further. We're starting to get our troops in position now, to actually take point Z. And we're going to get these further in position. Well, that's a lot of firepower off the tank, so we're going to bring him back, get him out, get him out of there. As you can see, when they start getting hit a lot, they're supposed to kind of simulate having AT rifles, or maybe certain AT weapons with them. But it's going pretty well. Um, we've got suppressing barrages, so I'm going to chuck one on there. This is going to be a really fight. But we've got Raider infantry. We are going to bring some more specialist troops, flame troops, some British Raiders. They're quite pricey, so he's going to retreat now because he's going to a lot of damage. They tried to artillery us. We are taking command point Z. We're going to storm into there. And we're just going to try and hold them off for a bit. If we can get into that position, it'd be fantastic. Some brutal fights happening here. We need more infantry as well. Use that supply up, that's what it's for. We have got siege artillery, so let's drop some there. We've got some more heavy artillery, let's drop it there, see if we can fend these troops off. Siege artillery will drop in, should shred these. Suppressing fire, let's get some more barrages in. Let's just absolutely light this place up. And you'll see the full mass of artillery. Look at that. Just demolished. So we've got more troops coming there. These are probably going to get overwhelmed. But these should be able to hold. These are holding for now. We've got the Raider squad. If they can get in there. The flame troops can also push up. More infantry come in. <laughs> it's just crazy, isn't it? But, like I said, it's really fun doing the assaults. I think they're more fun than defence. And as you can see, just carnage in the trenches. Should just win this, but they're in a bad way. We've got more enemy infantry coming. We're going to need a harassment mission. More artillery to drop, suppressing barrages, see if we can hold them off. Not doing much to them in the trench, but if they come out of the trench, it should loosen them up a bit. They will shoot out the trench the other way as well. So these raider troops are actually going to push. Go for the command trench, we're going to go for the victory while they're busy. 
We do have gas as well. But I think they're not in a good way. We're probably going to lose this position, so we're going to put some heavy artillery there. But they're pushing to there now. We send one squad there to support him, and one squad push up. And if we get these two infantry squads as well to push up there to the command trench. There we go. We haven't took control completely of Zed. It's getting there, but it's because the enemy's there, but he's raided from us. See, these will jump out of the trench, that's a bit of a problem sometimes when you tell them to go in, so it puts them at a really spot where they can fire into combat as well from outside the trench, I think. So you've got these troops here now pushing up raiders, and they won't get far, They'll probably get shot at. Maybe if we hit them fire, they should engage. If we get into cover, all oh, chucking grenades. Or random bullets. So we're storming the trenches here. And that'll be the command trench taken. And now we've taken that position, our reinforcements should be able to come from here. Let's bring some Indian troops as well. Right, so when you take a command position, this is what the AI needs to get better at, defend its command trench. But they're pushing back. They are definitely getting there. We're seeing some pushback. Whoa, that's a lot of troops. Um, why can't we use that? Is he still loading? Is it because he's under attack? Damn. So we're putting suppressing barriers to hold him back. Don't think we've got any more siege artillery. Oh, we have got gas though. Um, put some gas there. It should catch him out of the open. The artillery doing some quite good damage here. The gas is going to hit him. They've been gassed. It's going to hit morale and health. So now they're going to be coming into combat wounded. Not good for their health. And as you can see, just demolishing. These troops are coming up. They can quite easily defend. Command trench is being taken. And that should be the victory. And, they're, well, they're still bringing troops. We go back to the AI. It does send troops here, but they've lost so many that even if they pushed us off, we've just got more manpower now. We've just got too much. We do have a flame troop squad, which I've not really used effectively yet. Yeah, but they're supposedly quite good, but easily to kill. More troops are pushing us for melee. Let's get some suppression. Use it outside the trench, see if we can hold it back. There we go. Does do, it does quite a lot of damage. See when it hits, it does blast them. It does a bit of damage, suppresses them. But these troops are taking that. And we're doing quite a good job. They're holding them back. Probably better to get into that trench. And this should be the major victory. And that's it. So, the command trench is ours. So we ask for the ceasefire, we'll accept it. And we should get a great victory out of that. <laughs> and you got to see some tank gameplay. Yeah, as an assault, you've got to take some losses. But if the AI just gets a bit better, it'll be a lot better. So we lost 20, almost 3,000, about 3,000 men, basically. They lost almost 7,000. <laughs> so yeah, you, you'll lose thousands per match. Sometimes more. I think if you have enough supply, you could lose tens of thousands. Did you know bombing planes can fire back at attacking fighters, but will not change course or abandon their mission to do so? So that's useful. Bombers can kind of engage firecraft a little bit. So we'll just finish off with my final thoughts on what is good and bad. Just a quick wrap up. So campaign map, I like that. It's strategic. It's fun. It's simple enough to use, but it's got enough enough, enough depth to be interesting. I like the different variations of units. I like the tech tree. What's quite interesting. There's a lot of choice. You know, six major paths, but lots of little choices in between. I like the, the golden supply thing. Graphics are good, audio is really good. I've just had to turn it down for the video. Any problems right now? AI is not particularly good at attacking or defending, really. Um, and they need to balance things a bit more. So I think slowing things down and making the damage a bit more offset so you get more time crossing no man's land, make it more brutal. Obviously, it's a demo, so some of those things could be in there also change how tanks work a bit because maybe that's because there's no anti proper anti-tank weapons in the game at the moment but hopefully they'll switch that but at the moment it's definitely a 7 out of 10 as it is it's interesting i think i will be buying it when it comes out and i've heard they're working on letting modders have free access to it so you'd see some amazing mods for it imagine but as of now you know give the demo a go it's only about 10 or 11 gigs it runs on most computers i think so it's definitely worth a try and yeah, there'll be more videos to come from it when um, they release the game in March. And I, I may pick it up or I may wait, depending on if it's buggy on release. I've never walked the pre order and been burned too many times. So I hope you enjoyed the video and leave a comment, especially if you played the game. Tell me anything that I've missed.
Thanks for watching, everyone, and I'll see you on the next one.